The Pizza Tower is a mysterious structure with many mysterious mysteries held within. In today's video, we'll be diving into the lore of Pizza Tower, the theories, and the harrowing truths. Let us begin our investigation with the first question anyone would ask after playing this cartoon game about punching pizzas, and that is, of course, what war did Peppino Spaghetti fight in? We do not know what era of our modern world in which Pizza Tower takes place, but one can surmise based on the human experimentation and scope of tragedy on display in the war level that Peppino perhaps participated in World War II. As you know, Joseph Stalin is infamous for his gorilla-human hybrid experiments, during which he placed women in cages to f gorillas as to create the ultimate Russian soldiers, soldiers he would have used to conquer the world. An act mirrored in the background of Pizza Tower's penultimate stage. Alternatively, mayhaps Pepino fought in some abstractified cartoon pizza war, as the enemies that confront our peppy chef are literal pizzas. Although I'd hazard a guess that Pepino's brain snapped mid-battle and he began hallucinating pizzas as Italians typically do, visualizing his foes as food to fight back the horrifying truth that he has killed men. Men with women and children to feed. Men who might have a pizza parlor just like him back home in Germany or Japan or perhaps even Vietnam. This harrowing wartime experience does fully explain Pepino's withdrawn, anxious, and occasionally manic demeanor. He's got PTSD and must expend this energy to help manage his psyche lest he private pile himself in the staff-only bathroom of Pepino's Pizza. Next question. How can Pepino be a war vet if the creator of the game said he isn't? Wait, what the fuck? What? I'm gonna ignore that. Who is Gustavo? Gustavo is a Chilean manufacturer of methamphetamine. Wait, wait, wrong guy. From the very beginning of Pizza Tower, we notice and are accompanied by a stout and stumpy Italian named Gustavo. But what's his story? Well, if we search back through the tomes of history to the war level, we can see Gustavo himself makes a rare appearance, dressed in army garb and sporting a bazooka, no less. From this, we can surmise that Gustavo must have been a wartime compatriot of Pepino, helping him slay the Jerry's or perhaps the pizzas in order to stay alive long enough for them to end their tours and make it home safe. They surely formed a strong bond on the field of battle, and upon arriving home, the two of them began the joint venture of Pepino's Pizza. You can see Gustavo hanging around the joint in the game's final frame, and he's just kind of always around in general, so I assume he either works with Pepino or at the very least frequents his restaurant, as a slice of Signor Spaghetti's homemade pizza and companionship would no doubt bring him some peace after the nightmare they endured together. If you look back at early notes found on the Pizza Tower wiki, you can also see at one point Gustavo was conceptualized as Pepino's brother, and then his cousin, so they might even be blood relatives. I always viewed Gustavo as the Luigi to Pepino's Mario, although the Waluigi to Pepino's Wario might be a more accurate comparison, despite Gustavo sharing very few similarities in common with Waluigi, who is a devious motherfucker to say the least. Or at least I'm sure he would be if he appeared in any video games ever. Turns out I'm completely wrong about the previous comparison though, because apparently Gustavo has been described as the Mario to Pepino's Wario. Which makes a lot more sense. There's also the element of Gustavo's rat friend, Brick, who seems to be just another stupid ass rat found within Pizza Tower. Their first encounter involves Gustavo fleeing in abject terror from the rat, and the next shows them beating the living fuck out of each other. But as Pepino and in turn Gustavo and Brick progress up the leaning tower of pizza, the two of them reach an impasse, and then an informal detente, before finally growing into close chums, holding each other for comfort in the darkness of the staff only chambers. But not if Pepino's lucky, they're, they're planning cool, don't worry about it. Pepino might be the brains and brawn and beautiful face of this indie smash hit, but Gustavo and Brick are the heart and soul of Pizza Tower. Who is Mr. Stick? Mr. Stick is a conniving, spindly man who populates the Pizza Tower, symbolizing the harsh lessons of capitalism in opposition to the common man by preventing Peppino from moving up in the world without handing over his pound of flesh, or handful of 20 bucks. With this in mind, Mr. Stick's name could be a reference to the biblical adage, spare the rod, spoil the child. That makes sense. We'll once again take a trip to the Pizza Tower wiki here, where we can find trivia stating that at various points in development, Mr. Stick was Peppino's accountant, then later his landlord. But in the final game, he has no previous relation to Peppino whatsoever. However, I have my own theory on Mr. Stick's role. I believe Mr. Stick does not allow Peppino to move upwards and onwards because our charging chef has yet to pay the loans he took out to run his business that is now under threat. Mr. Stick is the vicious cycle of capitalism on full display because he is Peppino Spaghetti's goddamn loan shark. But that's just a theory. A game. Th People always say I sound like MatPat. I never really got that. But I never watched the dude, I just know that's a catchphrase. Who or what is fake Peppino? 
A living nightmare, that's what. The hubris of mankind incarnate. Fake Pepino is the fourth boss of Pizza Tower, and while he might seem initially unassuming, his twisted visage is soon laid bare. He is not Pepino but is in fact some unholy bastardization of Peppino, reflecting the torment and tumult that rages inside the real Peppino. Peppino Peppino. Peppino Peppino. The missing piece of this pretend Peppino puzzle can be found in the background of the Pizza Battlegrounds from War. Here we can see the experiments that formed fake Peppino possibly taking place. So for all we know, the Russians or the Germans created him. Perhaps Joseph Mengele himself had a- Is that, is that too far? Is that taking the joke too far? Is Joseph Mengele taking the joke too far? But there's also the fact that aliens make an appearance in Pizza Tower. And, uh, I have no evidence that Fake Pepino is connected to them, but his head pops up and it kind of looks alien. Maybe he's an alien. Maybe he's made of cheese. Maybe his real name is Bruno. I think, his, I think his real name might be Bruno. I don't know. What are these hidden areas? I have a real answer for this. The most astute of the pizza players might have found that you can discover extraneous rooms in the hub worlds of the game. Rooms that contain, to put it lightly, a bunch of weird shit. You got a meatball. You got a Sonic. You got a clown Pepino, an image that will surely haunt me till the day that I die. These rooms contain cut content of Pizza Tower, content previously contained in bygone builds, some of which were previously playable via the Pizza Tower Patreon. This dragon, for instance, this bulbous bastard used to be the boss of the first floor. How that fits into the grand scheme of things, I have no idea. Don't ask me, this game is fucking weird. What happened to Pizza Head's wife? I... I don't know, she's probably at home. Or maybe she's dead? What does it all mean? Ah, the final question. The only question. What does it all mean? This Pete and Dora's box of a tall tower tale. The simple answer is everything and nothing. To put it in layman's terms, Pepino's terms, the answer is this. Each boss serves as a personification of a hoop that Peppino must jump through in order to succeed in his life as a chef and eatery owner. Pepper Man represents the art of chefery, the base foundation of all that is to come. If you don't have the passion for perfection that comes through in Pepper Man's artful gaze, you won't make it far in this field. Vigilante represents sanitation rules that must be strictly adhered to, standards and practices, the FDA. You're gonna go to jail if you poison a motherfucker, Pepino, so you better stay sharp. The noise represents the need to put yourself out there and make a show of it all. Advertising, as he is quite literally a legally distinct version of the Noid from those haunting commercials that somehow I'm aware of even though they aired 10 years before I was born, which is a testament to the success of strong advertising, if nothing else. Fake Pepino represents competition, those who would take what makes you great and warp it to serve their own nefarious needs. Ravioli, ravioli, give me the formuoli and all that. And Pizza Face, of course, represents a pizza with a face. Also the game dev himself, and quite possibly the arduous process of game development itself. Also big business. Also yourself, your trauma, your internal demons, your PTSD, along with the worthwhile process of wrangling and conquering said demons. It all makes too much sense. In Soma, you may be wondering, where did I get all these answers? What is my evidence for all this? Well, me and my team of researchers would like you to know. We made it up.